Hi, Neil. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey. Hi, Neil. How's it going? Good right. Uh, Hi, Neil. All right, Moose. Oh, good to see you got a top on today, not your fighting vest. <laughs> I, I can go and get a vest off if you want. No, no don't, do, don't do that to me again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's kicking us off today? You want me to, Mark? It's Vinny from Sky. Just get a few ones out of the way. I'm sorry to be with you again, Neil. There's only a few quick ones after our earlier chat. <laughs> we covered everything this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only a couple of add-ons, mate. Um, yeah. First of all, how was training? How happy are you with the way preparations have gone? Yeah, brilliant this morning, um, lads. The disappointment from the other night, yeah, of course. We, we understand the, the monumental task in front of us. Um, but... You know, backs to the walls. We come out fighting, and and the the, the atmosphere in the group is is brilliant. Um, um, you know, and we really really look forward to the challenge of uh, trying to overturn the, uh, the the deficit tomorrow. Any last minute issues, fitness wise? Uh, no, quick turnaround in games, as as we know for both both uh, both teams. Um, so um, selection will be left till tomorrow afternoon. How would you describe then the mood amongst the players? Yeah, it's good. Um, it's good. Yesterday when we came in, I was had to pick the boys up, pick myself up first, um, and, and, and my staff done that. Then, then we pick the players up. Um, um, you know, we might have, first half was how we want to play. Second half, we, we weren't quite at our levels um, that we, we've been at. So um, again, being, being written off, you know, massively the underdog now, being being questioned in some some departments, um, and we want to respond, and we will respond tomorrow. And finally, for me, Neil, I just wonder, is this the time for a rousing speech? What plans have you got for a team talk pre-match? Uh, I spoke to the players this morning um, with, with, with some fact some, some, uh, and some passion. Um, you know, the fact that we've won six out of our last away games, no team in the championships picked up more away points than us since I took over. Um, and, and, you know, things like that, you know, important, important facts. Um, just, just to remind the players of the ability that we've got on our travels, um, coupled with the quality we've got in our changing room and the desire we've got, um, again, reiterate with 3-0 down at Leeds, um, you know, toward, towards the end of the game and, and come back. So we've got the ability to do it. Um, it's not going to be easy. We know that and we're fully aware of that. But now we're up for the challenge. So, man, good luck, mate. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah, if I could ask as well. Sorry. Okay, go on, Dan. Yeah, cheers. Um, yeah, you mentioned after the game that you've been involved in campaigns where you've had to come back from deficits. This obviously is a, a greater deficit than you had to come back from as a player or manager. Yes. What is the kind of message that you're putting across to the players? How do you go about you know, climbing that mountain? Well, I think you, you have to break it down. You know, we have to look at first half, second half in particular. Um, um, you know, make sure the players understand what, what we want from them. Um, and that's with team selection and you know with, with impact from the bench um how how we want the game to go um uh, the fact that you know, if we remind players on how well they've done what, what they've achieved uh, for me and they've achieved in the past in 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 their careers individually and collectively um the fact that I talked about straight after the game you know, comes straight into my mind in the change room about about Leeds United away, about the fact we've been to, we've been away and won at Ashton Gate in the local derby. We've won at um, we've won at Preston. We've won at Forest. Um, you know, we've had, we've had some really important wins. We've been to Middlesbrough in a, a, a challenging environment um, because what it meant in the aspect of the game, with old managers, new managers, things like that. So, you know, when backs have been to the walls, we, we, we've stood up to the challenge, and we've got to do it one last time. Um, you know, we understand we're playing against a very, very good side. Um, but that's even as part of the, the challenge, even more so um, that we need to be better than them. Uh, when we spoke to you after the first leg, you, you mentioned that Fulham were maybe celebrating as if they'd won the tie already. Is that something you've been mentioning to the players that maybe some complacency might creep into their game? No, I, I, I've not mentioned that to the players. The, the, the players are fully aware um, of, of their own thoughts um, on, on that. That certainly wasn't that wasn't Scott Parker. You know, wasn't Scott at all. Um, I was talking about the direction of the the, the, the second goal, um, and, and maybe it was just magnified because of the lack of crowd in the stadium. Um, you know, because I'm not not detracting that statement, but I'm not not you know adding anything to it. Um, that's gone. That's finished. The importance is the second leg. 
Um, we're two 0 down with ninety minutes to go, so we're kicking off the game with a minute and we've conceded two goals. So and we've got a long way to come back, but we've got the ability to come back. It's not been done before in championship playoffs, coming back from two goals down, but we've seen it happen in the League Two playoffs this season, for example. Is there anything you can take from those games? And if so, uh, what can you take? Well, you know, we, we understand, again, the challenges in front of us, um, but barriers are there to be broken down. You know, they're always there to be broken down. Records always there to be broken. You know, in in sporting, in sporting life, in all sports, not just football, then they continuously do get broken. Um, so that's our task in front of us, and we, we're not going to shy away from that. We're not afraid of that task. Um, I mean, we, we look forward to the challenge. And just on team news, if I could, um, Lee Tomlin's had his fitness issues, hasn't he, this season uh, with injuries. How much of a challenge would it be for him and others maybe to have what would be a, a third start in, in eight days? Is, is that a part of your thinking when, you, when it comes to selecting your team? Yeah, well, the thought process was always that you, you, know, you have to think about the, the bigger picture in all the games. Um, Tomo, we'll see how he is tomorrow. Um, he'll put himself up to play because that's, that's his character, that's his desire to want to do it. Um, but you know, I have to look at the squad and and lads that made an impact um and and how i see the game going and that game plan you know we don't have to score don't have to score a goal in the first 10 minutes um first goal i think is going to be vital in the tie of course it is um, um but it hasn't we haven't got to change the game from the, the, the first whistle thanks neil all the best Go on, Liz. Hi, neil. Go on, um, you're right <laughs> you say you don't have to score the first goal or you have to have score in the first 10 minutes, but the first goal is crucial. Um, yeah. Is that going to affect your team selection, the fact you have to go out and get goals to one? Um, yeah, well, the, the truth of the matter is we have to score two goals, two goals more than Fulham to, to, to take you to extra time and, and, and penalties or, or win the game in 90 minutes. Um, we understand that. What, what I'm saying is the game doesn't have to be won in the first 10 minutes. Um, um, look at the other night we were on top for the first half hour we didn't take our chances Fulham were better than us in the second half and scored two really good goals um, so um, goals at key moments change games any game of football and certainly playoff games and um, we have to make sure that we've got enough of a threat on the pitch from the start but also a threat on the pitch come the end of the game I know you managers. One manager will say the other night there were two brilliant goals, individual skill and a free kick. You'll probably tell me that every goal is, is a, the, the hallmark of every goal is there's a mistake it's somewhere in there. So could you have kept those two goals out the other night and should you have kept those two goals out? It was not a question of should. Um, could we? I believe for the first goal we could have we, we could have defended better. Um, and I've said that uh, and again, not criticising my players because that's really unfair of me and what, what they've achieved for, for me so far. Um, but you always want more, you always want more. And um, I think we could have got a bit closer to to to, to, Anima, to stop him getting in the position. But but then you also have to say the magnitude of the game and he, perform, and he performs a moment of magic like that, fair play to the lad. And then the second one, is it a foul, is it not a foul? Well, I've already had my say on the referee, mm. um, but again, he whips the ball over the wall into the, into the net. So, um, yes, good goals. Um, you know, goals... Your goals are key moments, obviously. Like I said, we had excellent chances in the first half hour. We didn't take out. You, you, you did look very angry the other night at the final whistle. Was that because of the referee, because of Fulham's celebrations, or was it a combination of kind of everything? That was, uh, obviously, the, the conceding the second goal at the moment that we did, you know, it's, it's, you know you're, you're in the, the magnitude of the moment. Um, I was disappointed with the referee. And I was disappointed with the referee, and I was honest afterwards from assessment of, of what he told me and, and what was said. But I can't, we can't change that now. So I appreciate the questions you're asking me, but all I can control is what happens uh, tomorrow night on the pitch. Well, throwing ahead to that, you've only just played at Craven Cottage towards the end of the regular season. Is that going to be a help or a hindrance? Um, a big help in the sense of post. Covid or living Covid, the changes to the change room and, and 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 the match prep. We now know what we're walking into on on, on match nights and mentally we're prepared for the game. Um, um, Fulham are a good side. You know, they've got good players, individual players. Uh, the group has been together for a period now, so uh, a good start of play. Um, so we we understand that as well. Um, so you know, we're fully prepared for what's what's coming tomorrow night. Last one for me. I've been involved in quite a few of your playoffs 
I've experienced this before. Most of them have been successful in Norwell, to be fair. Um, what sort of key moments and experiences are you going to use from your playoffs, especially maybe the last one where you beat Bradford, uh, going into the second leg tomorrow night? Um, I think in, in, in my two playoff campaigns as, as a manager, um, I've been behind in both games. Um, during the game, been behind at some stage. So, you know, I take solace from the fact that my teams respond and, and you know, the way we manage the group day to day, as well as as a whole overall, you know, strong characters um, that respond to, um, to difficult circumstances. Um, I've had experience of playoff campaigns, player and a manager on, on how to get through playoff games. Yes, not an ideal scenario being 2 0 down, of course it's not. Um, but I have to look at with a calm head team selection and how I think the game's going to go and how I want the game to go and then try and get that message across to the players and let them um, implement that, 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 that tactic. Um, and then once the players cross the white line, you can only, you can only affect it with a change of shape during the game or change it with substitutes. Um, and I have faith in my players to deliver. Good luck tomorrow, Neil. Thank you, Ian. Am I right to go next? Yeah, go on, Beth. Um, hey Neil, um, given the way the, the last five weeks has gone in this league, the twists and the turns and the results, who has the most pressure tomorrow? I know obviously Fulham have a 2-0 lead, but nothing sacred is it in the, in the, so far it, that we've had in the playoffs and the games? No, and I think that's the beauty of the playoffs. And, and as I said, leading up to the first, I'm a massive playoff fan. I, I think it's brilliant. Um, um, yeah, going into the game, I try to take the pressure off our players a little bit, stick it on Fulham. Um, um, you know, now we're backs to the walls. You know, we've got a mountain to climb. We're fully aware of it. We don't, we don't shy away from it at all. Um, pressure on us, still a little bit, because we want to go and give a good account of ourselves. We want to win the game, and then you want to win the game, and you want to hope that that takes you far enough to then, you know, to win the, the tie overall. Uh, pressure on Fulham, of course there is, because you know, first goal becomes crucial. Um, but, you know, pressure tonight, Brentford and Swansea, both teams, of course there is. Um, you know, the, the stage with 90 minutes to go in your season, you're down to a straight fight again. Um, um, I think even more so now with the biggest underdog in, you know, within the four teams, of course we are, because we've, we've got the most to do. Um, do we fear that? No. No, not at all. Um, you, have, you have to embrace it sometimes, that underdog status, and, and you have to go out and, and, and try and prove prove people wrong and, and provide provide that miracle um, and again look forward to it I, I hate to bring up the S word Swansea but it's been for a, for a neutral magical kind of relationship little bro- brothers I think spurring each other on if Swansea make the final would that have any impact mentally on you and the players you know wanting to be there as well not letting maybe the other brother being there and you not um, probably is it going to affect our performance tomorrow no is it going to affect the outcome of the result no I think internally we want to do better than them. They want to do better than us. That, that's what rivalry is all about. And that's what drives fans you know, to the passion. That's what drives the, 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 the match day rivalry in your local derbies. And ultimately, that's a massive part of football, isn't it? And, and that's why we're all involved in the game. Um, I, I spoke up you know, about us finishing above them in the league. was really important to me personally and, and the group and understand that. So, yes, we, we want to do better than them. Of course we do. Um, but I can't affect what, what they do now. You know, that's, that's nothing you know, to do with me. All I can affect is us. And, and if we manage to get through and they got through and we played in the final, then I can affect that. But other than that, they just go about their business. It's nothing, nothing to do with me that. Well, good luck. Let's hope both brothers make it. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? I'll, uh, I'll go next if that's all right. Hi, Neil. Good to speak to you again. Um, Hi, Dave. Hi, mate. With the crowd not being there, uh, we've already talked about, you know, essentially behind closed doors. Um, and you said that that's a disadvantage to yourself because uh, of the, the fact that Cardiff fans are the best in the playoffs. But mm-hmm. do you think that perhaps that, that this adds another dynamic to the fact that uh, you're essentially, it's a straight shooter now between you and Fulham. There's no extra um, environment and factors. Yeah, I think we could clearly see during the second half the other night when we may be needed that little galvanising extra, that 12th man, we, we didn't have it. Um, I know we, we've not played with it and I really played it down before um, other than stating that I do believe we had the most passionate fan base and would, would have had the biggest help from it. Um, I thought that affected us maybe for the first time um, since March um, the, the other night. Tomorrow, um, 
you know, it's not a place where you really go and get a, a, an unbelievable atmosphere at Craven Cottage. No disrespect to them as a club, obviously, but um, it is, we've done it 10 games now, so we know what to expect. We just go out and play. Um, um, you know, we now can't focus on crowd or no crowd. We have to focus on our jobs in hand, and that's, that's to overturn the deficit. Resilience is one of the key qualities of, of your squad so far. Since you've taken over, the 3-3 against Leeds stands out. Is that a defining moment that you'll be pulling from saying to your players, well, you've, you've overturned greater deficits? Yeah, I think 3-3 three, three, three at Leeds. 2-0 um, down at Cholton in my first game in charge. Come back for the draw. 2-0 down after 18 minutes against Brentford here and drew 2-2 two, two, and, and should have won the game. Um, we trailed in a lot of games and, and found a way to come back and either win or draw. And, and that does, that gives me a lot of faith in the group and a lot of belief. And it should give the players the belief as well because they can do it. Um, and we are a team that finds a way of finds a way of scoring a goal or winning a game. Um, and you know, a lot of credit goes to the players for that. And they have to find that within themselves, and they have done time and time again, and not just this year in years gone by as well. Um, so um, you know, we can be a dangerous, wounded animal. Um, you know, come back and hurt teams, and you know, we have to use that use that passion and that determination and resilience, the word you used, um, in abundance on, on Thursday. You've not been afraid to change things throughout the game, you know, uh, changes of shape and, and players as well. Uh, are you tempted to change things from the start, knowing that you need to go and get a goal? Yeah, quite quite possibly. You know, a lot of thoughts go through your mind as a manager. Um, personnel, shape, what's the best way to go? Um, tactically, what's the best way to, 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 to go to, to try and get back into the game? Um, I'll say no more. Fair enough. So just last question from me then, Neil. Uh, are you going to be watching the game tonight? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I said enough playoff games. You know, it's, you know, it's great. Yeah, how exciting. Um, um, yeah, I won't tell you I want to win. I was going to say, who's your money on? <laughs> no, no, no comment. I'm definitely <laughs> backing out of that one. <laughs> uh, great stuff. Best of luck for tomorrow, Neil. Cheers. Neil, you've had, uh, you've had goals scored all around the pitch this season. A lot of goals shared out and a lot of, I think, about four of your players are on eight goals. Does that make you, um, or does that hearten you, thinking that you've got threats coming from all over the pitch tomorrow night, which might be more difficult for Fulham to defend? Yeah, I think any team that gets to this stage of the season and ends up in the top six normally means that they've got real threats in their team. Um, and I go back to the point I made earlier, we need to make sure that we've got goal scorers on the pitch from the start. And we're finishing the game strongly with goal scorers as well. Um, we have got players that can produce big moments um, and they've done it time and time again here, certainly in, in the last few months. Um, and again, it gives me the belief that we get a chance, we're likely to score. We're likely to score. And I think that was the disappointment the other night is where we've been so clinical at key moments, um, wow. especially post-January time, and so clinical that we weren't in the first 20 minutes the other day. Um, and again, just reiterating the fact that you know, goals win games and scoring at key moments wins games. And I know I've got players in my group um, that are capable of scoring in big matches. And in terms of a match like this, like a playoff match, is it time for somebody to make themselves a hero, do you think? Yeah, I, th I think so. And I th think you saw that in the game the other night. And if, if you give Fulham some praise, it was, OK, I've already said that, could we have done better with the goals? But you have to give praise to the boys that scored those goals the other night. And, and now it's down to our players to step up um, and reproduce those moments. And, and they've done it. And we've, had, we, we've got match winners and we've had match winners and we've got players that want to be a hero. Um, but the players want to achieve. They want to achieve. And, and again, it's not about well done for what, what the group's done. It's about wanting even more. And it's just another opportunity for us to prove, prove ourselves um, and you know, the players prepared to do it. Great, Neil. Cheers. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you very much, all. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, Good Neil. Luck. Thank you. Mark, would you mind sending me that video, please? I didn't record it for some reason. Yeah, of course, mate. No problem. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you later if anyone's going back for Sol at half six. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Ta-da.